Hello there. In this video, we're going to take a look at my selection, my almost my entire collection actually, of silver items. So these are items made from the precious metal silver. They're not just silver in colour. Um, I first started collecting gold and silver, I don't know, probably 10 years ago or something, because I watched a lot of videos and read a lot of stuff about uh, how precious metals are a good store of wealth during a financial crisis. And as it turned out, I did actually make a bit of money from the gold and silver that I collected. I sold a lot of the gold about a year ago, in part to help fund the purchase of my house. But I have retained um, almost all of my silver because, to be honest, the silver didn't increase in value as much as the gold did. So I thought, well, why just get rid of all the silver when I've got quite a varied selection that's quite interesting to look at? Um, and it might go up in value in the future. So hope you enjoy seeing these things. I'm going to talk about it, where I got each thing from, if I can remember. Unfortunately, this doesn't include my collection of uh, Victorian flatware, specifically spoons. Yes, I have a box full of silver spoons, which maybe we will look at one day. There are a couple of interesting spoons here. Wow, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say on this channel. Anyway, let's start by reading the New English Dictionary. Not really. This isn't a real dictionary. It's, this is a really kind of easy to break into safe, if you look at the side there. This is where I used to store my gold coins, actually, but no longer. I have got a few things in here of value. So let's have a look. It's a bit dusty. doesn't get read much, the dictionary. Oh, look, it's not a book at all. Right, I've got the key here. Let's open it up. There we go, like that. Ooh, what have we got in here? Well, there's a few interesting things in here. The longest reigning monarch. I've got these. Does it have a year written on them? 2015, the Royal Mint. So these are seven years old. And uh, I think I have five of them. I think they were £20 each. And they're actually £20 coins. So they're legal tender, although you wouldn't go into a shop and spend it. Um, to the value of 20 quid each. So why wouldn't you buy these really? Because they're never going to be worth less than you paid for them. And if anything, they might be worth more uh, as a collector's item. So this sort of thing never really is going to be worth much at scrap. It's definitely not worth £20 in scrap. But as a collector's item, say for example, the monarch died and these were a limited edition of coins, you know, they might go up in value. We shall see. But yeah, these have taken on a special significance now her majesty the queen has passed away oh we've got some details on the back here 999 silver 15.71 grams so it's not actually not even like a troy ounce which is the typical sort of coin weight brilliant uncirculated Ooh, lovely so i've got five of these um, but i don't typically go for kind of coins like that in a sort of brand new condition but in that instance, I thought it was worth it. Now, a couple of interesting things in here. This is a napkin ring. It has actually got a monogram, or if, that, if that's what it's called, certainly initials on there. It looks like OF, but that's um, OF something completely different these days. Anyway, this napkin ring, I bought a lot of this stuff from eBay, so hopefully it's all genuine. I must have bought this years and years ago. It was filthy when I got it. Uh, it was sold as sterling silver, but do you know what? I was misled. It's not sterling silver uh, because sterling silver for the uninitiated, for the Americans out there, is 92.5% silver. Well, I did a lot of research into the uh, hallmark on this napkin ring, and this is actually 95% silver. So it's really quite rare, and it's also French. So there you go. Isn't that interesting? This is a silver ladle uh, with a kind of Buddha on the top. I can't remember how much I paid for these things, but I always paid about scrap for them, so, which, so you can't really lose out on it. Um, but this is actually, this is made in Siam sterling. So hopefully it is sterling, but yeah, made in Siam, which of course nowadays I believe is Thailand. Wow, isn't that interesting? So that's all I store in there for the time being. Let's uh, lock it up again in case somebody wants to take my Siam spoon. 
and let's have a look inside my jewellery box. Um, it's not that usual for a man to have a jewellery box. It does happen, but um, yeah, this isn't jewellery that I wear, I hasten to add. And um, a lot of this jewellery is actually broken. So let's have a look. We've got a silver cleaning kit. Now, I'm sure collectors of silver will see this and they will bury their heads in their hands because you're probably not supposed to um, clean silver to within an inch of its life, are you? Oh, look, another silver cleaning kit. What is this in here? This is interesting. Ah, yeah, little bits. Okay, so this is actually some gold. Let me be up front. This stuff is stuff that my mum has got from charity shops over the years when I've said, do you want to get me some cheap gold and silver for Christmas or whatever? And she just got me a bag of like gold things and I've uh, kept them. But this isn't worth much. It's probably, there are hallmarks on those. They're probably like, I don't know, nine carat or something and they're as light as anything. You know, I have my like spreadsheets that show my income from YouTube. I actually have a spreadsheet that has the value of all of these items catalogued. Should have put pictures in there actually because it's gonna make it quite difficult to identify. So let's have a look in here. You can see quite a significant selection of silver items. So this is packed full of silver and I did buy this stuff from a charity shop. And I didn't rip the charity shop off. I mean, they knew these things were silver because they say silver on them, but they were just cheap. They were less than scrap value. And I wasn't about to point that out to the charity shop. So I just, I suppose, you know, it's not that bad, is it? I just bought all the silver they had available at the time. And this is a few years ago when you could still go into a charity shop and find a good bargain. So kind of before 2020, really. Nowadays, I don't think you'd find anything like this. I don't know what your experiences of charity shops or thrift stores are in your country, but in this country now, they're kind of just overrun with traders and people who've made it their career, kind of traveling around car boot sales and charity shops, looking for things to buy and sell on. Anyway, nice collection of um, bracelets and necklaces in there. Now this is a really heavy necklace. I suppose it's a sort of choker chain thing. Not that I'm an expert in uh, jewellery or anything, but you know, quite a nice heavy looking chain there. I think that's one my mum got me. My mum got me these uh, bracelets from charity shops as well. But hopefully you can see on the side there, there is the little lion, which means 925 uh, sterling silver. And most of these have 925 written on them. I have a couple of coins here of interest. So this is a 1999 silver one ounce Britannia coin uh, that was given to me by my grandma years and years ago, 22 years ago. I think it is, I think it's got a value of, so two pound coin, but actually this is a collector's coin now that I think is worth about 50 quid. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's quite a nice one. I've also got uh, a Liberty, what is this? This, uh, it's a, I was gonna say it's a bison coin. It's got a funny name, isn't it? I'm never gonna remember what that is called. That does look like a bison, doesn't it? I bought this from Canada, actually, I think, because, not that I've been to Canada, but I got paid an affiliate commission in Amazon gift vouchers, and uh, the only thing I could think to buy was a, a silver coin, so that's what I did. We've got more bags of bracelets here. A lot of these are kind of broken, to be honest. I remember, distinctly remember that thing in there is broken. Look, more bracelets. And I suppose if I was to ever kind of dispose of this stuff, uh, I don't know, I suppose the cheap way around it is to, is to send it to a scrap metal place, but they'll give you the absolute rock bottom for it. I think the best way of disposing of all this silver would be to maybe go to an antique jewellery shop that would buy the things off you, but they probably still wouldn't get much. If you've got kind of unusual silver jewellery, it's probably better to try and sell it on eBay, you know, assuming you don't get ripped off by the buyers. Another bag of silver stuff in here. I can see really my mum did exceptionally well. Oh, actually here I can see, wow, I remember this was quite disappointing. So this is a sterling silver ring that I did buy from Amazon. Um, it is size 12. It's a little 
little tiny sterling silver band from Canada. I will have paid well over the odds for this because I just had to spend the Amazon voucher. In the end, I think actually I've started selling the Amazon vouchers to people uh, instead. Uh, so, because I was quite disappointed when this arrived and it's basically like probably 20 pence worth of silver that probably cost me about 10 quid. So, uh, not, not fantastic. There's some really weird silver things in here though, like quite a few rings and things. But that's just what my mum got me. One of the very first silver things, or some of the very first silver things I got, were these little souvenir spoons. That if you actually look on the back of them, I think you probably see up there, it says eight three five i believe these are 83.5 percent silver so they're not sterling silver and you know what since i got these because i think i may have got one from a charity shop for like 50p or something since i got these every single charity shop i've ever been in i have checked every single one of the souvenir spoons and never found a souvenir spoon since but that's just the way the cookie crumbles i guess i quite like this i think this is sort of broken actually but this is a little flower brooch we got a little necklace an ingot i don't know what you do with that would you wear that it's a little bit weird isn't it but yeah a little silver block there that's missing a gem of some description now these are quite interesting so this ring here i was walking in a field one summer and uh, i found this on the floor in the field. Now I don't feel too bad because I initially when I found it I thought oh my word I found something really really expensive and then I traced it back and found that actually yeah I mean it's not cheap I mean these are basically this is a solitaire engagement ring type thing that you can get from Argos for about a hundred pounds um, but the scrap value of this is probably you know a couple of quid so uh, I didn't feel too bad, but somebody out there has lost this ring. If you recognise it, let me know down below and I'll send it to you. Uh, I don't know how you're going to prove that that's your ring. But anyway, and here is another another kind of quite an ugly ring, actually. I think that's not very nice at all. But um, yeah, these don't fit me. Look, they just go over the front of my finger there like that. So, And I don't think they're really my style. So... I still look out for silver, um, and as I say, I have actually got a box full of spoons, including a tiny little solid silver um, teaspoon that I found in a charity shop for 50p, which is worth like six quid or something. It's easy to collect than gold because it's cheaper, so you get a much kind of wider variety. You can buy much more of it than the equivalent gold. Um, and I'll just keep it for a rainy day. If I'm ever desperate for the funds, I can sell this stuff. Historically, there's a much lower ratio between the price of gold and silver. Um, at the moment, yeah, silver just isn't really worth that much, but there is a finite supply of silver on this planet. So, you know, one presumes that at some point in the future, the price of silver will go up. I also, now I think about it, have a container of 2017, 2016, um, silver Britannia coins, which I which I kept, I think, 25 of those coins. I sold a lot of them uh, when I sold the gold stuff, but I did keep some just for kind of posterity. But yeah, that's just a quick tour of my silver collection. Bit weird, isn't it? Anyway, let me know down below. Do you collect silver, or has this enticed you to start collecting silver? You can go as big or as small as you like, a really easy hobby to get into and is something that holds its value. Isn't that exciting? Anyway, thank you to my Lord patrons who are scrolling down the screen now, especially George Foote, Jennifer Jones, Jim McCaig, Samir Al-Amar and Rob Van Eden, who are extremely generous patrons. Thanks very much. Do subscribe if you enjoy my videos and I shall see you next time for another one.